Hey everybody, Soundmaster Kelly here, your proud host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to the beautiful Rocky Mountains, around 8,000 feet above sea level at Buttermilk in Aspen, Colorado. Now, as always, we aim on the Signature Series to deliver you the evolution of sport, and we have done it again today. In 2014, we brought you two 22-foot superpipes side by side with a four-foot spine right down the middle that allowed the riders to transition between both. So why not push things a little farther? This year, we've added even more slope style to the point where you could really call this a pipe style event. First off, we have a 50-foot jump at the start, a huge gap transition off a massive cube at the top of the spine, and then a volcano feature at the base of the spine, in addition to these two super pipes that are lined with wall rides and rails. We have eight of the best young riders from around the planet here. These guys have been competing in single half-pipe competitions all year, and they are ready to sort of shed the norm and showcase for you guys what is really possible when they let go in snowboarding. Before we find out what they're gonna do, we're gonna check in on a little bit more on this format with the two Todds, Harris and the snowboarding legend, Richards. Hello, guys. Well, the competition format goes like this, three runs. We only keep your best score, Todd. The big question is then, what are the judges looking for? <laughs> what are they gonna dish out the points for? Well, they spent all this time putting two half pipes back to get back to back, so you've got to transfer over the spine. You've got to hit all these different obstacles and really vary a run. The judges don't want to see the same run. They've seen it every competition, and this pipe, luckily, doesn't even let the riders do that. So here we go. We'll kick things off with 20-year-old Scotty James coming to us from down under from Warren Dyte, Australia. He's a regular footer set to drop in. He did compete in Sochi, but this is a whole different ball game. As he looks down the belly of the beast, Scotty James now has this whole massive structure all to himself. And Todd, much like artists, it's now time for him to paint the canvas. Yeah, you got to paint this canvas. Three runs, best of three. Scotty James. This kid has grown about uh, 15 inches yeah. in the past two years. He was he was a smaller stature rider, but he's really grown up in both size and his riding maturity. He throws down big doubles over that gap, so I look for that here, like right as soon as he launches into the pipe. He's going to start with that jump feature up top, and like I said before, it sets the pace for his run. So here we go, Scotty James. And the question is, how technical do you get on that top jump? I mean, there's a lot of guys like Stolle who are very comfortable spinning multiple times around. Red Bull double pipe 2015 is off and running. Scotty James starting things off. Here he comes, setting up switch for that gap. Like I said, this will be a big cab double over this thing. Boom, one, two, whips it around. That is no joke. So Scotty James is looking to put down hammers early on in this competition. Front side 180 over the 22 foot deep part of the section. No pop tart. And that right there is extremely difficult to match those transitions. Scotty James with the 360 at the bottom, then anything's off for the front side board slide. Nice run for Scotty James. So the Australian gets things started here in Aspen Snowmass. Red Bull double pipe, and wow, what a first run. Scotty James full pull, top to bottom. All right, so check it out. Here's that double over the channel gap. Intimidating, 24 feet wide. He travels far down the pipe. The picture for that one is gonna be insane. And then right here, 
This is a little faky pop tower. It's just a same direction air where you come out backwards and land forwards. And then here, this is impressive to me because it's so hard to catch the transition on the other side. You have to adjust. You have to pop up high, and you also have to just not project yourself out to the middle of the half pipe. That is impressive. That's what the judges want to see. They want to see those transfers back and forth. One of the nicest guys on the circuit anywhere in the world. Scotty James always with a smile on his face. Watching him practice throughout the week here in Aspen Snowmass. Looks like he was just tied. And this is what they're trying to do. He's just out there having fun. Yeah, but there is a title on the line yeah. here. Scotty James wants to nail it, get a big score. So the score comes down as a 76.20 for Scotty James. That becomes the mark to beat at Red Bull Double Pipe. Well, one of the biggest features at Red Bull Double Pipe is the channel gap. And for more on that, Artina Dixon made the trek to the big feature earlier today. Well, to help give you guys an idea just how big this channel gap is, I'm actually standing right in the middle of it. The wall behind me, that is 22 feet. It's pretty intimidating standing here. The gap itself, this is 24 feet. Now, before you even get to this spot, you're going to hit a jump and then a rail. Now, this was one of the more significant changes made this year, and it gives the riders a couple different options. They can ride through it. They can go over it. They can hit the jump up the top and drop into either side of the pipe. And over the past couple of days, this shot has been all over Instagram and for good reason the channel gap is challenging it's scary and it gives the riders something new this year at double pipe all right thank you very much Tina the big question is who would be the guinea pig to drop in and give us a preview of the unbelievable work that is done here in Aspen snowmass we found ourselves a two-time Olympian to do just that hey this is Greg Bretz and this is my course preview so this is the closest you're going to get to ever riding like Greg Bretz is, you know, having him hold this camera. And this gives you an idea. You start this run off with the jump up top, pretty mellow, just kind of sets the rhythm. And then what you get here is a bunch of different options. You can either roll in, you know, one side. Look, Greg right here is jumping over the gap into the east side of the pipe here. And you just kind of get an idea of how big these walls are. There's a transfer up and over. It's that four foot deck section that's really, you know, it doesn't seem like it's that big, but it will give you problems. And that's what the judges are really going to be looking for is you to utilize the spine section. You can't get stuck in one side of the half pipe and wear a groove in this thing. You got to keep it moving. As you see, Brett's over the teardrop at the bottom, and that's how you do this thing. To the top of the hill we go. It'll be Jan Scheer, the 20-year-old out of Switzerland. He is a veteran of the Sochi Games as well as he gets set to drop in. Now, Scheer is one of those guys, Todd, that has kind of gradually come on over the last 18 months. Didn't really know a lot about him, but this kid can just flat out ride. And like the Ferguson brothers, it seems like he can ride just about a little bit of everything. Yeah, we're really seeing a change of the guard here in the past year. After Sochi, it seems like there's a new crop of youngsters coming up here and really showing that they they are the ones to look to for pipe progression. So this is Jan Scheer dropping in out of Switzerland, run number one of three at Red Bull Double Pipe. Here we go. Switch backside, 540 to start his runoff, kind of mellow. Here he goes, just wanting to put down a solid one. Goes for the 180 in, and then a nice 1080 over the gap there, landing just a little bit low. You want to land high up on that wall to keep your speed up, especially here in Red Bull Double Pipe. Nice transfer up top. Looking for something down here at the bottom. That's 18 feet high right there, four feet across. Nice 360 over, so good utilization of all the features in this pipe and into the teardrop here at the bottom. Switch backside 180, clean run for Jan Shearer. Todd, we talk a lot about inside the industry and with riders having good flow. Explain to the folks at home that maybe aren't familiar with snowboarding competition what that flow means and did Jan have it here? I think Jan did have it here. Flow is not making, you know, it look like you're struggling to get from wall to wall, from feature to feature in this Red Bull double pipe. You want to make it look easy, make it look effortless but also be doing the hard transfers, the hard moves. You see right here, alley 540, going against the grain of the half pipe, basically spinning your body back up the hill. And here's that wall ride. You want to you know, utilize all these different features, gets a 180 up onto that wall ride. Using that thing to his advantage there, Jan Shearer then would end off his run with the switch backside 180. So good utilization of all the features. Judges want to see that, but still, 
he could pump up a little bit in his tricks. And the score comes in as a 65.60. So Jan Shear currently sitting in second place behind Scotty James, who leads the way with a 76.20. Next man to drop in will be 26-year-old Arthur Longo out of Ledouve Alps, France. One of the most impressive riders here, placed third last year at the inaugural running of this event. Todd, that gives him a little bit of a leg up. He knows what to expect. As we talked about, this pipe, though, is so much different than what we saw last year. Arthur Longo, he is a guy that's really pushing what is beautiful to watch in half pipe riding. Casual backside seven up top. Watch the way he holds his body. Watch the way his arms are. He's so calm, cool, and collected through the walls. That is style. Frontside 180 through the channel. That intimidating chasm. Arthur Longo decides to go through it over to the other side. Backside 360 over the 22 beautiful. foot deep part of the pipe. Impressive. Longo is looking good here. Switch 360 over. Longo is going nuts. Oh. oh, unfortunately for him, goes down on the switch alley of Rodeo there. But I like to see what he was doing there, and he makes it look casual and easy. So Arthur Longo, not quite a full pole here through the side-by-side -side, east and west 22-foot super pipes, Todd, but a lot of style early on. Yeah, he really took to these twin tubes here. Check it out, Arthur Longo starting up top. The extension of that front leg, watching it all the way through. Clean, clean, clean. That is all about style, and Arthur Longo is the one to look to if you're looking at how to make a half pipe run look beautiful. So Longo having those great transfers, that big backside 360 up top. Just a little bit of a problem here with that Ali Brodio off the wall ride. Unfortunately, doesn't get all the way around in that rotation. Kind of clips the deck right there, but I look for him to clean that run up, and we could be seeing someone that could potentially bump into the top three. And the score coming down for Arthur Longo was a 49.20, so he currently sits in third place after his first run. So here we go with 19-year-old Chase Josie out of Haley, Idaho. He finished second place last year at the first running of Red Bull Double Pipe, and here he is on run number one of three. Chase Josie. The fact that he's got some pretty interesting transfers down here at the bottom. I've, I've seen him do a fake it forward 540 from one side to the other over the spine. And that's that's a pretty massive move here. It's pretty tame when you consider it in a slope style course, but over the spine, that's a pretty big deal. Chase coming in fast here. Whipping that around, getting things set up. And a 900 up top to start things off, and here he comes. Up and over with a Michael Chuck, an inverted 540 over that, and then straight into a double. Chase Josie coming out swinging. Mark to beat 76.20, put up by Australia, Scotty James. Chase Josie setting up, backside 360 over the spine. Front inverted 540, and then getting a wow. 720 into the flats over the teardrop. Nice run. Do we Chase have a new Josie. leader? Oh, yeah. That is a new leader. So a beautiful full pole for the young man out of Haley, Idaho, using absolutely every inch of the double pipe. Check it out right here. This is called the Michael Chuck. It's an off-axis backside 540. What you're doing is you're throwing it over the opposite shoulder. Just a little, a weird one, a little bit of flavor for Chase Josie, and that was just the beginning of his insanity. This run just kept giving. You see right here the double, dipping his head the second time, about 11 feet out. You can see it right there on that Red Bull height monitor. Off to the side there. That's a 1080, sets him up. And then check this out right here, the transfer to the backside, 360, comes over that, lands perfectly, combos that in, and then down the bottom was this 720 and lands right in the flats. Boom, how are those knees? Well, they're very young and they can handle an impact like this. Chase Josie, nice run, top to bottom cleanliness. And the score for Chase Josie is an 85, so he takes the lead here in run number one of three. I guarantee you, Todd Richards, he is going to be looking up the pipes to see what the Ferguson brothers have in store for us. The Ferguson brothers are battling one another, but they've also got six other world-class competitors trying to take them down. Yeah, you know, what's more important, bragging rights at the dinner table? <laughs> or go, you know, we're just going home with that big check. I'm going to say with these guys,
The sibling rivalry will definitely play in the spectator's favor. Starting things off, front side 1080 to get things going. Love the way this kid rides. Rides with power. He's got that rudder arm in the back, that arm just cocked for anything right there. Big 1080 to start things off. And then that transfer, 360, that's 22 feet deep. Wow, he is kind of going bananas right now. Backside 180 into oh. the flats. How's that feel? And Todd, up to that point, that was one of the most amazing sequences going back to that channel gap into the double that we've seen in qualifying practice or anything. Dare I say, a machine gun of awesomeness. So here it is again, 20-year-old Ben Ferguson on run number one. There's that transfer through the chasm gap, sets him up for this double cork 1080. Switch double cork 1080, brings himself around, and that was just getting him ready for this right here. This is nuts. This transfer over the spine to be able to match that transition on the other side, that takes some guts. Lands that perfectly. Gets a lot of speed out of that. Goes into another double. Ferguson just back to back, to back to back. Spots that around. And then I don't know what he was thinking here. Backside 180, I've never even seen him try that yet. And just takes this thing way out and over. And this really shows you how important it is to match your pop to meet that transition on the other side. He basically takes that thing into the parking lot and he can't take the compression and just puts his face into the flat bottom. But Ferguson gets another two runs to make it happen. Boom, right at the bottom of that transition. Now those are 18 foot walls there at the lower section. A big hit though, but Ben Ferguson up, waiting for his score to come in at 45.20, which has him in fifth place. And he's standing by with Tina. Well, and Todd, you said it, Ben, you do have two more runs. How do you fix that transfer there at the bottom? You had the run going at the top. I was just going really fast, faster than normal, I guess. I don't know, and I uh, absorbed too much. So I just got to air it out a little longer, and we'll match up Tranny, and we'll be riding it out next time. What are the conditions of the pipe right now? It's really good. It's fast enough. It's like soft, but not too slushy and slow, so it's pretty good. All right, best of luck next two runs. So it's Ben Ferguson in fifth place. Again, Chase Josie leads the way with an 85 even here in run number one of three. Down to the final man in the first runs is his 15-year-old Gabe Ferguson. Little brother, big style out of Bend, Oregon. It's all about the unpredictability of the Ferguson brothers, Gabe. What does he have that his brother doesn't? Maybe common sense at 15. 15 year olds, you know, they tend to abandon the common sense a little bit. And maybe that will play into his score's favor. He's doing the important things. He's getting his music dialed in. 15 year old Gabe Ferguson just got his braces off. Online school and here he is at Red Bull Double Pipe. Here he comes, qualified first yesterday into a double wildcat to get things going. He's tracking into this thing with a lot of speed. Big front side 540 inverted style. Up and over, kind of similar to his brother's run. Big backside 360 transfer. Nice and smooth. Ah, oh, the Ferguson's having trouble on their first run through the Red Bull double pipe. A little bit of disappointment for us at fans, but it puts the pressure on them to really bring it the next two runs. Gabe Ferguson sitting in sixth place. We take a look at the standings after one run of three. American Chase Josie leads the way. Remember, he got second place last year. He leads this year with an 85. Scotty James and Jan Shear round out the top three. Yeah, you know, I'm just kind of looking for these next runs. This is really where people heat it up. Now they've gotten used to this thing. They're going to work on that energy and really, really push it. So Stolly Sonbach set to drop in on run number two. He's got to clean things up, Todd. Run number one did not go so well, a 24.40, but he has the makings. He's got that slope style, style flow vibe that he always is able to drop into competitions. The key is now, can he make it work in side-by-side -side super pipes? So watch Stolly's first jump. This is going to be impressive because he can do this in his sleep. He is the one to beat in slope style right now. Casual 1080 to get things done. Also, at the bottom of Stale's run, if he can get there, I look for him to do the 720 over the spine at the bottom. That's what he qualified with yesterday. He just needs to make it there. 
So a little lock up on that 900, but a very stylish in the air, up and over into a double crippler on the other side. Stunt Sunback looking good, front side 360 staying up. Putting this run together, this could be the backside. Oh, front side seven over maybe? Or oh, just a big backside 360. Wow. Stale Sonbeck making it look easy. So he goes from east to west and west to east in the side-by-side -side super pipes here at Aspen Snowmass and the Olympic silver medalist with a beautiful full pull on run number two of three. So check it out, here's the backside 1080. Slight double cork, slight dip of the head around on the other side. God, it's so nice to not know what these guys are going to do before they drop in. Regular half pipe riding has become so stale. Red Bull double pipe really keeps you guessing. Stale Sandbeck was going off this run top to bottom. You see another double there. And this big backside 360 transfer over the teardrop feature. Looking so clean. And he took this one way into the flats. Stale, he just has skills on a snowboard. He's Norwegian. Why wouldn't he? And how about this score for Stali Sonbeck? An improvement, 80.40. That vaults him into second place with one more run to go. And he's now with Tina. And the Olympic silver medalist in slope style now competing in half pipe and just performing out there. What are your thoughts on that run? That double crippler was huge. Uh, it was scary, but it's fun. It's so much fun just riding this thing. and. We're just, it's a mellow, it's just mellow, mellow contest, but everybody's sending it, having a good time, and just trying to figure out how to ride this thing still. Yeah, how do you decide on the line with so many options? Uh, you kind of got to figure out your line and then Amazing get spontaneous in there, you know, you, you end up different play, space, different parts of the pipe all the time, and you just got to, you just got to go with it. Just going with it, guys, and having fun. Todd? A great run for Stolly Sonbeck, 80.40, impressive indeed. So there is your leader, Chase Josie has the mark to beat so far. He laid it down on run number one in 85, and he's still yet to take runs two and three with Louis Vito somehow crashing the party up there at the warming hut. Right now, let's check in with Sal Masakela. You know, it takes thousands of hours to build a super pipe. Yes, snowcats working around the clock, moving tons of snow for weeks on end. And then comes the painstaking shaping that needs to be done by hand by the sculptors at Snow Park Technologies. Now, last year, they built two perfect side-by-side 22-foot -side super pipes. But you know what? They weren't satisfied. So SBT went back to the drawing board. They sat down with the riders, and they asked a simple question. How can we make this even better. With last year, we basically had some wall rides, we had a rail on the spine, but it was our first kind of real experiment in doing a full 22 foot back to back double pipe. So this year, we wanted to create more options. We wanted to give these riders a lot to think about. The real big change for this year was getting the direct athlete feedback on what they want to change. Gunny and Frank hit me up with an email and they're like, we got double pipe coming up, let's start planning it now. So I went up to SPT and we sat down one day and just drew up a bunch of ideas and this is what it ended up being. Well this year we added a jump. That jump then takes you into four different ways you can go. Up on the cube, uh, through the channel, over the channel, or a big hit on the right pipe walls. And from there, you can take the bigger spine, the smaller spine. We got the two wall rides, we brought them back, but we put them down lower. And I think my favorite little cookie in there is uh, what we're calling the volcano, where the bottom of the spine basically bulbs out a little bit like the bottom of a thermometer. So after a really good day of practice today, we got the feedback from the riders, and tonight we're gonna get out there and uh, take the jump, make it a little bit poppier, steepen up the landing. This year with the 18-foot section, it makes it a little easier to transfer, so I think everyone's just gonna go out there and push their level of snowboarding. We're in a constant state of progression and evolution in these sports, and so we're just trying to create the best venues we possibly can so the best riders in the world can show what they've got. So here we go, Benji Farrow on run number two. 
Farrow's first run score was not his best performance, had some problems with a 26. He's got two more runs to lay something down. And remember, the top score so far is an 85 put up by Chase Josie. Benji Farrow, he is my dark horse to take this event here today. He's got a lot of tricks. He's been practicing really hard in this thing since day one of practice. Switch nice. double backside rodeo to get things off. Dumping it over twice there. That's where he had problems his first one. 180 on, 180 off on the rail. And this is cool right here. Airing over the gap, jump style. Straight into a front side 10. More of a traditional style of a half pipe run. He needs to start getting over that spine. Here he goes, set up with an air to fakie. Switch air over the spine. Switch front side air over the spine. Caballerial board slide, and then over here, backside 360. This is looking good for Farrow. Nicely done. Benji Farrow, that's how you go from top to bottom. So Benji Farrow had a 26. Todd, this will be a huge improvement. Looked a little sketchy there for a while because I'm thinking he's not transferring out of that east pipe. He's staying there, but he did get two transfers towards the bottom. He started the run off with the switch double backside rodeo. Nice way to get things going. And then as you said, you know, he kind of got locked in pipe rhythm. And you need to break yourself of that. And it's it's a go-to. It's kind of a crutch. If you get lost in this thing, you don't have enough speed, you just go to what you know. But he definitely made up for that. You see right there, hooking up at the deck just a little bit on that 1080. But it was that switch air transfer into the backside 360 that's really going to garnish him the big points or garner him the big points down at the bottom and then that cavalarial board slide and that just set him up perfectly so i think that's going to be a decent sized score for him so benji farrow picks up a 70.60 so he vaults all the way up to fourth place with one more run still to go at red bull double pipe Three more men to take their second run of three here in Aspen Snowmass, and we'll kick things off with the current leader. That is Chase Josie out of Haley, Idaho. Just 19 years of age, but he threw down an 85 on run number one. So Todd, he is in the enviable position of having two runs still to go. He's the current leader with an 85. Confidence has got to be brimming right now for the youngster. Yeah, but don't get too cozy on top there. There's still some serious talent left to come down and put down what they know they can do. Here he goes, Chase Josie just whipping it into temporary tornado up top. 1080 going, start his run off, off the jump up top. Here we go, Chase into the pipe here, looking for something big. Double Michael Chuck over the gap. That was savage. Oh, that was a nice little recovery from a butt check on a double cork 1080. And enough speed to transfer. Wow, Chase Josie is going for it here. He's really milking a lot of moves. Backside five transfer. Chase Josie, get out of there. Carrying a ton of speed, checks up and still gets a touch on the rail at the bottom in the East Pipe. So Chase Josie, your current leader, with an 85 and backs it up with this beauty. Oh man, Chase Josie was on a tear right there. You can tell, he whipped in the double cork back 10 up top, and then straight into that double Michael Chuck, the double inverted 540 kind of off axis. You see it here, dumps over his rear shoulder once, whips his head, dumps it over again. That is a gnarly trick to do over that gap. Crazy. And Josie kind of locking up right here, on this double, you see, watch the landing come around, spots that. This is the only part of his run, really, that kind of just didn't click for him. Butt check, but back up, and that kind of threw him off a little bit because it ate up with just a tad bit of his speed, but he was able to come back from that one and put a lot of elements down. He just needs to clean that up a little bit, and if he does, with like this backside 540 over the spine, this is no joke right here. Landing fakie over that spine. It just shows you how comfortable these guys are getting riding this thing. This is the fourth day they've had in it. Like I said, if they had a week in this thing, Lord only knows what we'd be seeing over that spine. But Chase Josie, if he can just clean that run up a bit, we could be seeing massive scores on run number three. Chase Josie finished second last year. The 63.20 does him no good. He stays in first place with his first run score of 85. Chase Josie. This is Ben Ferguson, the older of the Ferguson duo, 20 years of age out of Bend, Oregon. An absolute ripper. A little bit ironic, the top two qualifiers are currently sitting in seventh and eighth. 
Chase Josie sits at the bottom, resting on that 85 with one more run to go. But I guarantee you, Todd Richards, he is going to be looking up the pipes to see what the Ferguson brothers have in store for us. Anxious to see this run. I want to see him clean it up. Really what I want to see, you know, I want to see Ben put down a solid run, and then I want to see run number three go absolutely bonkers. Here we go, Ben Ferguson starting things off. Front side, 1080, stomps that down. Here he goes, look at his power car. 180 up and over, this would be a double. Boom, throws it up and over twice. A lot of speed for Ferguson, backside 360, get it. Matches the transition perfectly into a double. Oof. Had problems here, his first run with the back 180. He's got it this time. Ferguson looking good. El Garriel, 360 hand plant. Front side 360 up oh. and over. Oh. And the teardrop does him in. The final feature for Ben Ferguson as Chase Josie goes, whew, that was a smoker until then. Wow. The teardrop took him out. Might see a single teardrop run down his face. Well, he's sitting on a 45.20 is Ben Ferguson. This should be an improvement, Todd, but he's got to get the full pull if he wants to be on the podium. Full pull meaning top to bottom. He needs to make it without any mistakes. Front side 1080 to get this run off. Gets that awkward grab in between his legs right there. A lot of yoga. I'm not sure if uh, Ben partakes, but you know where I'm going with this. And then right here, the double cork 1080. Comes around on that one, lands smoothly, and then the 360 transfer. Gets a little backside grab in there. You see his head going, God, I hope I projected right. Makes it back in here. Solid landing up and over. And then here's the transfer where things went bad. Tried to do a frontside 360 up and over at the bottom. So unfortunately, wasn't able to get the complete run there with that one little mistake at the bottom. You saw the reaction of our leader, Chase Josie. So it is an improvement for Ben Ferguson. He bumps up to a 56.20, which gets him out of seventh place, but just one position. 15-year-old Gabe Ferguson sits and waits for his second run of three. Currently sitting on a 32. Todd, we expect a 32 from Gabe Ferguson before he even gets into the pipe section of the double pipe. <laughs> yeah, he's dropping 32s when he puts his boots on in the morning. So here we go, Gabe Ferguson setting up for his second run here. Trying to correct the mistakes from run number one. We saw his brother kind of come up short the last run. The number one qualifier, what's he gonna bring? There's that double wildcat, basically a double backflip. Here he goes into the double pipe. Nice frontside 540 casual style. Boop, frontside 180 through the chasm gap. Here we go, backside 360 transfer up and over the 22 foot deep spine section of this Red Bull double pipe. Looking good, front side 360 casual style. Power carve. Back five over the okay. teardrop. So the 15 year old comes back and gets a beautiful run from top to bottom, Todd. The thing that really stood out to me was how effortless, effortlessly he made that look. The transfers for him are just a piece of cake. They are, but you know, I want to see a little more flair from him. Here we go, there's that pop little 180 through the middle of the gap. Into the cab seven. His brother right there is doing a double cork 1080 into that 360 transfer. There's a nice front side 360 transfer down here at the bottom, casual style. Look at him spot, 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 late rotation to the hips. Matches that transition nicely. And then that power carve into the backside 540 off the teardrop down here at the bottom. So, yes, he made it from top to bottom nice and smooth. I'm expecting more out of him, though. So the score coming down for Gabe Ferguson. He was in last place, in eighth place. This should bump him up considerably. He's going to go with a 73.20. So from eighth to fourth, Gabe Ferguson, a big jump. And we'll have to see what he has in run number three. Maybe we can find out right now. Tina Dixon with Gabe Ferguson.
Well, Gabe, you bumped up from eighth to fourth with that run. You got the front side 900. What else made the difference for you? Uh, just landing, I guess. I fell first round, so I was just happy to land. I mean, I didn't expect anything any else. Like, everyone's killing it so hard, so I'm happy there. <laughs> yeah, and you competed in this event last year, so you have experience. I know you like the changes, so how do you approach this third and final run? Uh, I guess go for it. Do some more flips, I guess. It's got to take that. I, that's what people are doing. I don't know. Everyone's looking for you, Gabe. Best of luck, guys. So Chase Josie still sitting in first place. Remember, the mark to beat, an 85. So in his third and final attempt, this is Australian Scotty James, the 20-year-old veteran of the Sochi Olympic Games, set to drop in. James currently sitting in third place with a 76.20. Now, Todd Richards, as you look at his first run and what he was able to do, does he have enough sizzle in that recipe to clean it up a little bit and launch himself into first place? Well, big strength, Scotty James' run. He's got that 1080 up top, switch backside 1080 off the jump. That sets him up for the double cork 1080 across the gap. That is his big power combo up top. I think if he can land that and carry a lot of speed, Scotty was looking very good in practice. He's been one of my favorite guys to watch in this thing just because He's really pushing his limits as well as the limits of this double pipe. So Scotty James on course, currently sitting in third. What's he got for us? Switch backside, 1080 to start the top of his run. Now he comes in to the parallel pipes here. Double cork 10 over the gap. Nice, that's what we want to see. Now Scotty can kind of just unleash over the spine. 180 over the spine, nice and clean. Pop tart, kind of pop out. Backside 360, over oh. the, oh, Scotty James was going so good on that run. Unfortunately, landing a little bit low. Oh. So the Aussie gets to the flatlands of the eastern pipe here and scrubs all his speed. It was a beautiful save. He was able to 360 out and keep going, but at that point, Todd, yeah. just no speed left. And what a bummer for Scotty James. Started that run off so clean, there we see the cab double cork 1080 up and over the spine, uh, excuse me, over the gap right there. And he comboed that all the way down at a nice spine transfer as well. It wasn't until the bottom there with that backside 360 just went a little bit too big. There's another look at the double cork 1080 over the channel gap. That thing is just a chasm, 24 feet wide, intimidating all the way. There's that pop tart, kind of getting a little boot grab in on there. And then the backside 360. Just a little too hot to handle. Can't take that compression at the bottom, and he goes down. Very important to match the transitions. I think Scotty just cooked this one a little bit too hot, and boom, right down here at the bottom. Well, that's a free fall from Ugh. 22 feet, and Scotty James pays the price down here, able to stay on his feet. Judges certainly taking notice of that as he loses his speed as he headed over that rail. So for Scotty James on run number three, it's a 47.20, but in our three-run format, he gets to hold on to run number one. So Benji Farrow set to drop in. The 23-year-old originally from Ludlow, Vermont, now residing in Breckenridge, Colorado, has a good score, Todd. He picked up on run number two. It was a 70.60. He needs about another 10 or 15 points if he wants to be anywhere near the top of the podium. It's all about the potential, and Benji Farrow has the lines to make this work. He just needs to clean it up. A lot of the riders faltering different sections of this course, but Benji Farrow has one last shot to put it together. Switch double backside rodeo to start things off. Puts that down easily. Oh, unfortunately, Benji Farrow goes down right now. Up top, little mistake for him. He's gonna have to really bring it down here at the bottom if he wants to eliminate that mistake from the judges' minds. Ah, two errors for Benji Farrow, and I think that's going to do it for him right there. So Farrow still making his way down the pipe. Little arrow of the teardrop at the bottom. And just trying to make the most of that. He is not happy. So Benji Farrow, he really had the skills there to do it, but unfortunately for him, some mistakes cost him a podium finish. So Chase, Josie still in the lead as Benji Farrow double backside rodeo, switch to the backside rodeo, and then popping off this rail just a little bit early up top. 
unfortunately for Benji, I really had him as one of the guys to beat here today, but just some little mistakes cost him the run for the podium. He had everything, and he was one of the workhorses out here all week long, really pushing his limits to see what was possible in this Red Bull double pipe. But hey, this event's going to keep happening, so I look for him to hone his runs in and perhaps be a threat here in the future. Throwing up the glove, he knew he had what it takes, just unfortunately he couldn't put it together. Benji had a good time, he was a great competitor, made it to the final, but the 70.60 is the best he can do, and he will be in fifth place as it stands right now. Let's check in with Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd and Todd. Uh, friends at home, what's your favorite new feature here at Double Pipe? Are you enjoying our blend of slope style and super pipe? How many of you guys would actually transfer the gap at the top? Be honest, uh, is this the direction of snowboarding competition that we could look forward to in the future? So many questions, why don't you give us some answers? Get involved in the conversation. Follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Plus, there's also the Red Bull Signature Series.com where we have exclusive content just for you. And if that's not enough, there's also the Red Bull TV app where you can catch up on this show and all seasons of SIG Series. You're welcome, guys. So with just three competitors to go, the worst American chase Josie can do as the leader is third place. He is still sitting on that 85 that he laid down on run number one. Todd, this is the luxury. He gets to go out there now and see what he can do. He knows he's on the podium, but he also knows the two Ferguson brothers are the last two to drop. Yeah, and you get two guys in, like, that are going to run after you that have probably the most hype on them coming into this event of anyone. Chase Josie carrying a lot of speed into this first hit. Whips that around, gets a double 1080 on the first hit. We saw what he did his second run. He really wants it. He keeps bringing the spice. Double back Michael Chuck over that gap. That is a heavy, heavy move. Oh! Chase Josie goes down. Unfortunately for him, he's not gonna have an opportunity to bring that heavy, heavy run, and he's gonna have to count on that first run score to hold. Backside oh, wow. 720 over the spine. Man, I haven't seen him even do that in practice. So Chase Josie's day is done. The worst he can do is third place by virtue of the first run 85, but the Ferguson brothers are coming, and they have been sensational in practice and qualifying, not so much today, but all it takes is one. All it does take is one, and unfortunately for Chase Josie, this one didn't go as planned. The double cork backside 1080 to start off the run. That was hot, he landed that cleanly. He also stomped down the double backside rodeo over the gap. And as far as I'm concerned, all he had to do was cakewalk his way down to the spine section. He didn't need this double crippler right here. All he needed to do was a straight air right there and then start to work the spine. But he was going for it, went for the double cork 1080, and that's where he went down, sat down in his butt right there, and that's what cost Chase Josie a potential bigger score to put him even further into the lead. But he goes for the 720 over the spine at the bottom, Man, if he could have put all the ingredients of that run together into one mega course run here, we would have been seeing a score well into the 90s. So Chase Josie hooking up with the deck right there. And that was it for him. So let's see if this score that he put down in this first run will hold through the Ferguson onslaught. And the score of 28, so he holds on to run number one, 85. He remains our leader. Chase Josie, Stolly Sonbeck, and Scotty James, one, two, and three, with two athletes to go, and they are brothers. Kicking things off will be the elder brother. Ben Ferguson will drop in, and Ben's got a lot of work to do right now, Todd. He is currently sitting on his best score, a 56.20. He needs an 85.01 to take over the lead. The screws are tight right now. Ferguson needs to really bring it. Older Ferguson not only wanting the victory here, but bragging rights at the dinner table over his brother. So here's 20-year-old Ben Ferguson. He will be the penultimate competitor. After him, the final competitor and number one qualifier will be Gabe Ferguson. And all the while, Chase Josie sits and waits. Did he do enough? 85 is the mark to beat as Ben Ferguson out of Bend, Oregon drops. Here we go, dropping into the jump. He's coming into this one on his heels. Another clean, fro. oh! That 1080 goes down, so with that error, 
I'm going to make a prediction that we will not see this Ferguson in the top three. And there it is, the best method of the day. We've method seen air the over the channel the gap. Big backside 360 over the spine. The judges want to see perfection, though, from top to bottom, including that jump up top. Unfortunately, that fall will really hurt him, even if he puts down a super tight run here. And at the final feature, oh. problems again for Ben Ferguson. Uncharacteristic for that young man, 20 years of age, and so much upside and talent. Just didn't have it going on today, and Chase Josie breathed a little bit of sigh of relief. Sometimes the pressure is crushing. I mean, from the, from the producers of this television show to the media that's here, everyone had their focus on Ben and Gabe Ferguson, and in particular, Ben. He was the one to look at in practice. He was the one all the riders were talking about. Unfortunately, he goes down on the front side 1080 up top and just kind of busted his mojo for this run. But a beautiful backside air. Method air kicking it out of the deck. Proper style, looking clean. And then just a couple little errors down at the bottom, but it really didn't matter. He already had that fall up top, and I think that's really what did it to him. Kind of busted his mojo just a little bit. The judges, they want to see a clean run from top to bottom. So this Ferguson, Ben, will not be the one that will walk away with a new title here at Red Bull Double Pipe as we see him just hook up over the teardrop at the bottom and go for a stomach power slide. Ugh. Ben going down, getting a little snow in his shorts right there. That does it for him here today at Red Bull Double Pipe. So unfortunately for Ben Ferguson, it was not his day. His best score at 56.20 and seventh will be the best he can do. Chase Josie is your leader and we are down to our final competitor. It will be 15 year old Gabe Ferguson. Young man is loose to say the least, Todd, and we saw him during practice and during qualifying. He certainly has the run to win this competition, but can the young man rise up in maturity and lay it down? He just needs to be clean. Gabe Ferguson, a lot of pressure on him, but not quite as much as probably on Chase Josie's shoulder right now. The tension, you could cut it with a knife. Gabe Ferguson needs to put down a clean run from top to bottom. We saw him last year be the only one that was doing a big 360 over the spine. He's got the transfers. He just needs to clean it up and bump up the technical factor of his run. And here we go. So progression takes a center stage at Red Bull Double Pipe year number two. And 15-year-old Gabe Ferguson, the last man to put his stamp on it. The number one qualifier coming in, starting things off. Double cork, 1080, puts that down. Already improving on his run score from before. Here we go, big front side, 540, just needs to keep it clean. 180 over. Brings it into a double seven, excuse me, double 1080, oh. and washes out. The Fergusons both go down on their last run. And what does that mean? Chase Josie will unofficially take home this year's Red Bull Double Pipe. So Gabe Ferguson brings it down to the bottom. Frustration on his face, joy on the face of Chase Josie. 19 years of age out of Haley, Idaho in the Sun Valley area. Got second last year. Go ahead and upgrade that to first. Chase Josie is your winner at Red Bull Double Pipe 2015. Just unfortunate with all the hype that was on the Fergusons that neither of them could really put it down here in the finals, but we did see moments of brilliance. Here's that double cork 1080. He was going for it though. Gabe really wanted it. He was gonna combo that into a huge backside 360 transfer, but unfortunately just comes unglued here on the landing. So what a bummer. He washes out in the flats. He basically technically made that, just couldn't hold onto it across the flat bottom. And unfortunately, the 23 gets tossed out. Gabe Ferguson will finish just off the podium, but at 50 years of age, talk about a bright future, 73.20, his best run score. The final results of the 2015 Red Bull Double Pipe look like this. American Chase Josie is your winner. Stolly Sonbach of Norway in second. Scotty James out of Australia in third. And young Gabe Ferguson, the 15-year-old out of Bend, Oregon, winds up in fourth place.
And the Red Bull signature moment goes to none other than Chase Josie for pulling off an amazing run, Todd. It was an 85 that got the win. And you know, it was this double backside rodeo over that 24 foot intimidating gap up top that really brought him this signature moment. I mean, this is a risky move. He did it up top. Chase Josie, today's big star. And the winning run, an 85 plus the Red Bull signature moment to Chase Josie, who's now standing by with our Tina Dixon. Chase, you came into this event having taken second place last year. You were the first guy to hit that channel gap. What kind of confidence did you have? I don't know. I was just feeling good all week. We've had lots of warm weather and slushy, perfect half pipes. And I don't know, I just decided to turn it on and I was riding really good, so I'm so happy. Well, this event seems to be all about creativity and doing lines that you want to do. When you really showed that, how would you describe your runs? Yeah, I'd, like, I'd describe it um, sort of technical, going over the spine two or three times in a run. I'm trying to go big, trying to do some banger tricks too, and it just came together today, so I'm so stoked. Well, it did come together, and there was a lot of drama at the end with the Ferguson brothers. So many people were talking about them. You're taking home the win. What does this mean to you to now finish on top here at the second year for Double Pipe? It's awesome. Yeah, I was like on the edge of my seat watching Ben and Gabe both go because those guys are so talented. But yeah, first place today is pretty crazy. Enjoy this, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Tina Todd. Another Red Bull double pipe goes into the history books. And once again, a lot of progression. Yeah, you know, it's not only with the riders, but what snow park technologies can do with a huge pile of snow. They've made the ultimate canvas for snowboarding artists. I can't wait to see what can happen in the years to come. No question about it. The athletes and the good folks at SPT are already thinking about 2016. And with that, we send it over to Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd, and thanks to all of you guys for hanging out with us today at Red Bull Double Pipe from Aspen Snowmass. What a party, what a fine way to end the season with clearly one of the most progressive competitions that you'll find in snowboarding. You can only imagine what the course designers at SPT and these athletes will have in store for us next year. Big congratulations to Chase Josie getting the win, followed up by Stella Sandbeck and Scotty James on the back end of the podium. We will see you next time.